Hello family, how are you doing on today? I'm just stopping by to get into some word because you know what I'm going to say. My words are empty and God's word is full of life and it's full of power. So let's dive in and giving God the glory today. Father, we just glorify your name, oh God. We bless your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. Father, for truly you are the King of kings, for truly you are the Lord of lords, and you are the great I Am, the magnificent Father that you are. Father, we thank you that you graced us with another day, another day to give you honor, Father. We just repent right now for any sins, knowingly and unknowingly, Lord God. We ask that you reveal those things that are still yet in us that need to be pulled out, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you're purifying us, trying us, pure as gold, Lord God. And we thank you that gold is purified by the fire today. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us life and having it more abundantly. You said in your word, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. So, Father, we thank you for life, healing, vitality, and strength. Today, Lord God, you say, let the weak say they're strong today, Father God. Let the poor say I'm rich, God. So we thank you, Lord God. You say faith without works is dead, Lord. So, Father, teach us how to work our faith. Teach us how to know that without faith, it is impossible to please you. But with faith, Lord God, we can, we can soar like an eagle, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. That you are trying our thoughts, that you know our hearts, that, you, that making sure that they're aligned with your word, your will, and your way, oh God. God, I decrease as you increase, Lord God. Where my ability ends, let yours kick in, Father. Father, I would just like to take this opportunity to pray for teachers today. Teachers that have a heart to teach your children, God. Give them the strength that they need, Lord God. To carry out this school year, Lord God, with pause and with grace, God. Making a difference in the lives of your children, God. That's a true honor, Father. Father, let us work with unity and oneness and strength and on one accord, Lord God. Seeing what the expected end is for God is for your children to be imparted upon or be imparted into as you download to us. We will upload to them, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you today that we don't take life for granted, Lord God. But we welcome the Holy Spirit to come in to rest, rule, reign, and abide. We thank you for our elder brother that gave his very life for us, Father. That we, we won't take it for granted that he died upon Calvary, Lord God. Tormented and tortured for, uh, for our lives to be spared, God. So, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus right now. And we put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to stand or uh, withstand within the evil day, Father. We thank you for the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness, the belt that's gone about with truth, feet that shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and Lord God, the sword of the Spirit, which is the true living word of God, and the shield of faith, used to quench every fiery dart that would ever try to come our way. So, God, we thank you, Lord, that you have already given us our weaponry, thereby we, we could cry, I'm a father, and thereby we, we can defeat the enemy, Lord God, at the onset, God. So, Father, we thank you that the race is not given to the swift, nor is it given to the strong, but it is given to those that endure, Father. So, let us learn to endure unto the end without wavering, without complaining, without doubting, Lord God, but believing you and taking you at your word, reminding you that your word says that we are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We are blessed coming in and going out, Lord God. So, we thank you today. Because somebody did not make it. And somebody will not make it through the day. So, Father, let us search our hearts and try our thoughts, making sure that they're aligned with you, God. If, if, if by chance you stop by and call us home, that we're ready, Lord God. That we're ready, willing, and able to kiss you, Lord God. And to see you 
upon arrival, God. Father, we just love you, Lord. We magnify you. Our soul magnify the Lord. For he's truly worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be magnified. Worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. Father, we thank you for our elder brother that's seated upon the right hand of you, making intercession for us day and night, Lord God. Our soul truly magnify you, God. We thank you that you've already paved the way for this journey, for this thing that's called life. So let us recognize and realize that you have a plan, Jeremiah 29 and 11. You say you know the thoughts and the plans that you have toward us. They are good and they are not evil, Lord. So, Father, we thank you that the weapons of our warfare, they are not corner, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we recognize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, evil, wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So we pull those things down today, Lord God. Everything must bow to the mighty, almighty God. Everything must bow Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, Lord, I thank you right now as I seal this prayer in the precious blood of Jesus, knowing that the enemy cannot cross the bloodline. We would like to bind the enemy using our authority today because you've already given us the keys. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we use our keys and we bind the spirit of lying, deception, deceit, malicious intent, toxic relationships. We bind sickness, poverty, and disease. And we lose your love, your mercy, your peace, your deliverance, your righteousness, Lord God, your healing power, Lord God. We loose it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. So, Lord, I ask you to let this find, let the video find who, who it needs to find. Let it bless who it needs to bless and let it arrest who it needs to arrest, God. Lord, I pray a special prayer of healing over your people, body, mind, soul, that you'll heal them, Lord, and that you would deliver them, letting them know that they are truly free. And not in bondage. And Lord, I would like to send up a special prayer for the little boy that came across my path this morning needing some money, Lord God. Jordan, I call his name up to you. And I ask that you bless and touch him, Lord God. Whatever it is that he need, whatever it is that he battling, whatever it is that he's facing, you're able, God, to do Exceeding and abundantly above all that which we could ask or think according to the power that worketh on the inside of us. So I seal this prayer with the precious blood of the Lamb. And I thank you, Lord God, that you will be edified and you will be glorified. So family, I'm coming out of Malachi today. It is actually the last book of the Old Testament. I'm coming out of Malachi chapter 3, and I'm going to go all the way to verse, uh, let's see, well, let's just read, and I'll let you know what verse that I will stop at. I'm thinking verse 7, but let's see what the Lord says, and I may pick it up in, in Malachi 4. Are you being refined today? Because, you know, if you are being refined, then that's a good thing in a way. Because, you know, it's a good thing, not in a way. It's a good thing. Because that means you're being purified. You're being stretched. You're being pulled. And it may feel like, Lord, I'm just being pulled to capacity. How much more can you stretch me? How much more can you refine me? But you see, he's refining you so that you will be pure as God. Yes, he's in the refining business. Let's see what he has to say. Behold, mm -hmm, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Okay? And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. You know, God is a covenant-keeping God, fam. He loved covenant. 
he hate when his covenant is altered. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. Okay? Remember, we're coming out of the Old Testament. Jesus had not yet come. But let's see, I think he's on this way. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. And like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. God is after righteousness today. You know, he said that we are the righteousness of Christ. But the righteousness of Christ has been refined. The righteousness of Christ is being stretched. The righteousness of Christ is being built up. Let God have his perfect work that you may be whole, complete, entire, lacking, and wanting nothing. Let's keep going. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in the former years. And I will come near to you to judgment. Some people don't believe that judgment has hit the land. Some things are about to happen, and we're going to think it's the enemy, but it's going to be that shaking where God is saying, I got to take the wheat from the tear. So if you feel like you're being pulled in all different directions and stretched and like, Lord, how much more can I take? How much more are you going to take me through? This fire is hot. Let him refine you today. Let him refine you. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer. And against the adulterers. And against false swears. And against those that oppress the hirelings in his wages. The widow and the fatherless. And that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. Judgment has hit land you want to be refined purified to the capacity that you've been tried in the fire for I am the Lord he says I change not I mean he's not going to change his mind because he's, he's calling out He's been saying this for quite a while, urging people to come back to him. But we always think we just have that one more day. We just, that 10 more minutes remaining. But when somebody went to bed last night, they had no idea that they would wake up this morning. You see, family, we think some of us think that we just have it all together. My pastor preached something today and he said something so poignant, so valuable, more, more precious than gold, you know, more precious than money. He said, you know, you can be a dead man walking. Praising and giving God lip service. And you know, God gave me this before a couple of months back. He don't need our lip service. He don't. We know how to shout just right. Remember the last message God gave me. And he talked about he, you know, him seeing everything. He knows everything. 
And how people try to maneuver and hide in the crowd like God can't see. But he know and he sees everything that was in Job. But let's keep going. For I am the Lord, he said. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He showed him a little mercy. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinance. And have not kept them. Return unto me. And I will return unto you said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Now they asking God. God knows. If you think you're right, talking to me first, fam, we better make sure we're right. Because that way that seemed right until man will lead to destruction. So if you just go in the church or you sing in the choir or you go and uh, take food to the shelter or you on the prayer line praying with the people just want to make sure you're not that dead man walking. You want to let him refine you. So you'll come out pure as gold. Because he is the Lord, he said. And he changed not. Even from the days of your father, ye are gone away from my ordinances. And have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Okay, now I'm going to go to Malachi 4, first, first verse. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Judgment has hit the land. Let God refine you with his fire because you don't want the fire that he just spoke about. He said, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. I'm reminded of 911. When those planes went into those buildings, and that building began to burn with the fumes or fuel from the I don't know if it's 747 or, you know, I don't know the name of the, of, of the airplanes, but I remember seeing that plane drive straight, the second plane, straight through that building. Can you imagine you're in a high rise sitting at your desk or getting your cup of coffee or laughing with your co-workers and saying, girl, I don't feel like... Going, coming to work today, doing this and thus and so, and all of a sudden your world changed. The blink of an eye. The snap of a finger. Judgment has hit the land. Am I saying that was God's judgment that day? 
I don't know that. I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm telling you what God is bringing back to my remembrance. I don't think that was judgment. I think that the enemy was allotted that. But this is what I remember. Seeing that plane go through that building. Mid out in the dead middle of that. So there are people on the top floor. People on the bottom. But the people in the middle. They engulf with flames. And I remember seeing that scene. And I remember seeing the people jump. To their death. Because the fire was just too intense. Can you imagine burning or being burnt alive? And can you imagine having to make a choice? Do I burn alive or do I jump to my death? They didn't have time to think. They didn't have time to prepare. God is saying, judgment has hit the land. You may not have time to get it right. So now, is the time to get it right. Talking to me first. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of a star. You have some time, but not much. Confess your faults one to another. Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. But listen up. Acknowledge. That Jesus Christ, the Son, that He is the Son of the living God, that He died upon Calvary, but He rose on the third day. And the Word of God said, if you believe that, you shall be saved. And that is in, let's turn to it, Romans. 10, 9, and 10. See, because I'm not going to have the blood on my hands. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what the Father says do. So we're going to Romans 10. 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm in my mouth. Sorry about that. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart. So you have to confess. But then you must believe. See, it's one thing to confess, but you have to make sure you believe in thine heart that God hath raised him, meaning Jesus, from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I hear somebody saying, that's all I have to do? The key is, confess, believe. Confess, believe. Your confession is unto salvation. Going back to Malachi. So now I'm in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Try the spirit by the spirit. This this, this me saying this to you. Not, this is not in Malachi. 
Don't believe every word you hear. But if they're not coming from this word, definitely. Okay? There's many voices out here. You have to know who table you're eating from. I'm not here to play with God. I don't get anything for coming on here. But obedience is better than a sacrifice. So let him stretch you today if you're being stretched. If you feel like you just got one thing after another and God just showing you yourself and what you need to get straight, let him do it. See, it's uncomfortable now. Because we in our new, yeah, we in our next and our new, we have crossed over. It don't feel good. But I promise you, if you let him do what he needs to do in you, through you, and for you, it's going to work out. All things working together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this said the Lord of hosts he will not lie to you don't worry about the one that's doing wicked things to you. Don't worry about that one that's talking behind your back. Don't worry about that one that wants to see your demise, that's looking for to sabotage you. Don't worry about it. God said he got your front, your back, and your side. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. So remember, you have to keep his statutes and you, you have to keep his judgments because judgment has hit the land. There's a shift in the atmosphere. There's a shaking. I feel that. Behold, I will send the Elijah. I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let God refine you. Let God do what needs to be done to get you where you need to be so you won't burn like stubble. You may not have the opportunity to repent. Now it's high time. Let Him refine you. In the refiner's fire. The fire of affliction. We see the first fire, for example, in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7. Now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials. So that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable is tested by fire may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. James 1, 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you meet various trials, for you know that the testing or the trying of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Hebrews 12, 5 through 10 and 14. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, for the Lord disciplined him whom he loves. Or one translation say, the Lord chasing in whom he loves. And chastise every son whom he receives. If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, 
then you are illegitimate children. He disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. Pursue holiness without which no one will see God. You can't escape. the jaws of hell if you're not walking in holiness. Let the refiner refine you that you may come out pure as gold once you've been tried in the fire. Okay? Unshakable trust in God's purifying fire. What is life like in the refiner's fire? More than anything else, it is the unshakable trust that all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. And on the path to purity and heaven, the other truth is this. No pain, no gain. Both things are true. The Lord is like a refiner's fire. And a refiner's fire is a fire. So family, I want to leave you with that. I want you to think about what do you need God to refine you in? What area of your life? Are you being tested today? Are you being tried? If you are, let him try you. That you may come out pure as gold. And if it's your enemy that you are worried about today, I want to let you know. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. But most importantly, let God refine you. So family, I leave you with those words. Remember, my words are empty. But God's words are full of life. And they're full of power. So I want you to test the spirit by the spirit. Knowing what season you're in. Knowing if this word was for you. If not, pass it on to someone that you know is being tried by the fire. But I can tell you this. If you stay in that fire. Because I'm reminded of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They would not bow to Baal. They would not bow to the king. They held to the profession of their faith. The ordinance came out. You are not to worship no other God but me. And those three Hebrew boys said, oh, the devil is a liar. They said, okay, he is. You're going to be thrown in the fire. The fiery furnace. And the king sent out whomever is caught. Worshipping that other God over there. They would be thrown in the fiery furnace. So I could see the soldiers saying, oh yeah, they're over there praying. Them three Hebrew boys and then Daniel over there with all the windows open. He out there howling out there. Praising and worshipping, magnifying their Lord. So they said, well okay, you throw Daniel over there in the lion's den. But see them three boys there, they want to test and try me and telling me what they're not going to do. You you boost that fire up seven times high. And we're going to show them what it, who they're going to bow to. They're not going to bow to me. I'm going to put them in the fire. Because they allow God to test that fire. Now can you imagine? They're telling us, if you don't bow down. We're going to behead you. If you don't bow down, we're going to cast you in that fiery furnace. But let's go a step further. They boost that heat up seven times. It was so hot. They say that the very men that was standing there to throw them in, they were consumed by the fire immediately. But because they heard no gnashing of teeth when they threw them Three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace. They heard no hollering, no, no gnashing of the teeth. And and, 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 and the king just, he, he dumbfounded. I don't hear nothing. You sure you boost that heat up? Wait, open that. Let me see. Let me look, just peep in there and see. 
And the guy said, well, you know what? They in there walking and talking. He said, what? Walking and talking. He said, not only, didn't we throw three in there? Oh, I see a fourth man. So let me tell you this. If you go ahead and let him purify you and refine you and take those things out of you. Because you can't take those things to heaven. See, that's how I look at it. It's baggage to me. I can't take hate. I can't take, oh, my enemy made me mad, so I'm going to be angry. I can't take, oh, you know, I want to go sleep around with Billy Bob today and tickle my flesh. I can't take that with me. So I'm letting God burn it all out. So I will come out pure as gold. Try it in the fire. The refiner's fire. See, his fire is not like that fiery furnace. But let me tell you something. It can get pretty hot. And it can feel pretty intense. But I say to you today. Let God refine you. He's the refiner for all refiners. You shall come out pure as gold once you've been tried in the fire. I love you, fam. And know this, the best is what? Yet to come.